Hey guys, it's Luna, and if you don't already know who I am, I used to be a Hearthstone Grandmaster, and I played in the World Championship three times, and today I just want to talk to you guys about Pink Mage, which you guys have probably already heard of. Um, Pink Mage has been around for a long time. I kind of saw a dip in popularity for a little bit, but recently people are starting to get really good results with it. Personally, I hit 12 wins on Heroic Tavern Brawl with it, and I finished top 30 on Ladder with it, so I think it's a pretty strong deck. Um... It's really flexible, and it really rewards good play. And I asked on Twitter if you guys wanted to see a guide on this or Mindlock, and most people responded for Pink Mage, so that's why we're making this guide today. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, I think first things first is we need to go over the mulligans. Mulligans are extremely important if you want to increase your win rate. If you're keeping the wrong cards, then obviously you're starting off on the wrong foot. So these are the cards I generally will always keep. Um, with the exception of Arcane Worm, I think you should always keep Sorceress, Wildfire, and Snow Flurry. Now the reason I say with the exception of Arcane Worm, Arcane Worm gets a lot weaker if you already have a one drop. Um, Wildfire and Sorceress are the two premium one drops and these are the ones that you're fine with having in multiples. Arcane Worm kind of has the diminishing returns, but the reason I put it in the always keep column is because it's really strong as a one drop if you don't already have another one drop. And I think having a one drop in this deck is extremely important because getting early game chip damage in is gonna add up a lot and it's gonna be a lot easier to burn your opponent out. And it also creates a lot of board tension and board pressure that your opponent's gonna eventually have to answer. Um, Snow Flurry is a card that I will usually only keep as a one of unless it's a matchup like against Rogue, for example, where I you know, wanna freeze minions pretty often. Or if it's a, a, you know, against like Death Knight, for example, where they're going to have weapons and always have minions to kill. But in general, I usually only go for keeping one Snow Flurry. Um, sometimes keep Arcane Worm if I already have the two, if I don't already have a one drop. But I would always keep multiples of Wildfire and Sorceress because these are your premium one drops. They're very strong. Now, things change a little bit if you're on coin. If you're a coin, I still recommend keeping those cards I already talked about, but now we can start talking about cards like Dungeoneer, Nightcloak Sanctum, and Commander Shivara. So the reason I'm more likely to keep these cards on coin is because you have a lot of three drops, so you can go coin Dungeoneer into Sanctum, or coin three into Arcane Intellect. There's basically a lot of three drops that you can hit, right? So the ideal situation when you're playing this deck early on is you want to use all your mana to curve out and create as much minion pressure as you possibly can. Um, Shavara is only on here because I think with coin, if you already have wildfire in your hand and you're able to just guarantee a lot of cheap spells on Shavara, then she's pretty good on curve. Otherwise, if you have cards like Arcane Intellect or Cold Case and stuff, she's not really good with those because it's going to be really hard for you to find time to use those really expensive cards, whereas if you get Coin and Wildfire off of her, she's basically a 3 mana 3 5, and she generates like more amazing cards. So she's kind of a corner case, but I definitely wanted to point her out because she is super strong on Coin with Wildfire. Um, speaking of Dungeoneer and Sanctum again, these are cards I really like against Rogue, or if you're going first and you already have a curve. So let's say you're going first and your hand is Arcane Worm, Snow Flurry. I think I like keeping a 3-drop in that case because it guarantees that you can use your mana on turn 3. Additionally, against Rogue, these are very strong for their freezing effects. Dungeoneer is really good because if you can connect to face with a 1-1, one -one, you can prevent your opponent from getting a really good Jaka off. Um, Sanctum is really good because of the new nerf to the Rogue location. The Rogue location minions no longer have stealth, which means that as soon as your opponent has their big burst turn, you can basically punish them and prevent them from doing a lot of damage to you. So these are two cards I will almost always keep against Rogue and keep on a curve. Um, so these are what I like to call combo keeps, meaning I normally want to keep Reckless Apprentice, but sometimes I'll keep it with Wildfire in matchups where they have a lot of minions. So for example, if you're playing against Death Knight, they usually swarm the board, or if you're playing against Aggro Mage, they swarm the board with Chogs. Basically, any matchup that's going to be very heavy in swarming, you can keep Reckless and Wildfire. This combo is even better on coin, because you can use it to tempo it out on turn 3 and pull ahead on board, or you can greet it. Um, with Sorceress and Cold Case, 
cold case gets a lot better when it's discounted obviously and if you're discounting something cheap as sorcerers it's still good but it's not nearly as strong as you would have it with cold case right um so these are just some general things to think about when you're playing against an aggro deck you know keep reckless and wildfire or if you have the sorceress you might want to keep a spell to go with it Um, and these are what I like to call greedy keeps. So greedy keeps are something you typically will only think about keeping against priest. Um, Dawn Grasp and Arcane Intellect are both really strong because you generate so much damage with your hero power that you actually have a lot of time to scale with it because priest is not going to kill you, right? Priest is not going to pressure you unless it's been priest, obviously, but most priests are going to be control priests. So I like keeping cards like Arcane Intellect because they will guarantee, help you guarantee that you're going to draw your entire deck, find your Dawn Grasp, and same thing with keeping Dawn Grasp as well. She's going to help scale you into the mid game. Um, also worth noting, not while I have Dawn Grasp on the screen, this is a card that was very, very strong pre -nurs. It used to deal plus two hero power um, every time you get an honorable kill. Now it's only plus one. So it's not nearly as strong as it used to be, but it still is pretty strong. For that reason, I only like keeping it against matchups that are extremely slow. Because the meta is still relatively fast, games end pretty quickly. Usually you're going to be finishing them off with cards like Mordress and Frozen Touch. Magister is still going to be a pretty decent card, but it's going to be used more as a tempo option in this matchup. So for example, you want to think about the pool of spells that you have. Um, so let's say for example you played a cold case on curve and you have magister in your hand um going into turn five or turn six you might be tempted to throw a frozen touch of face or use a flurry but you have to think about well if i do that dawn grass will no longer have a frost spell in the pool and cold case is a very premium spell that you want to have recast right so something to consider another thing to consider with dawn grasp is they're really good at being used defensively so for example Let's say you're playing against Rogue and you have to use an Alibi in the mid game to keep the Rogue opponent from dealing massive amounts of damage to you. After you use the Alibi, if that's the only Frost Spell in your pool, you might want to keep it the only Frost Spell in your pool so that moving into turn 7, you can basically get another free turn. Um, yeah, just really think about the different spell schools. Arcane Intellect's also a pretty premium one. The only other Arcane spell you have in the pool is Mana Worm. So you don't want to necessarily grief your spell school pool with a mana worm. You will want to have an arcane intellect ideally. But, you know, a lot of times you just have to play for tempo and every situation is different. So don't try and pigeonhole yourself. Try and, see, try and see the game from a broader scope and try and figure out what you're going to do over the course of many turns. And Magister will help plan you that. And last but not least, I just want to go over a quick game plan. So this is typically a very easy three-step process that you're going to do in most games. Ideally, you want to start off with an early curve. This early curve is going to consist of those minions I talked about in the always keep column. So you want to get as much chip damage in as possible, try and go face as much as possible. If it's an aggro matchup, you can train, but typically against slower matchups, you just want to get your damage in. And then moving to the mid game, these cards, like Solid Alibi and Flurry, are really good at helping your chip and burn plan. So once you're ahead on board, you kind of reach a point where you can start ignoring board. If you have multiple freezes or have like a Shavar in your hand, you can start throwing your Alibis out mid-game, start throwing your Flurries out mid-game, or if you have a Magister and you're going to tempo into a Magister, you can just like kind of start ignoring your opponent's board and start crafting this burn game plan. Because ultimately, you're not going to kill your opponents with minions, you're going to kill them with burn damage from your hand, but these early minions are only useful early in mid game. So you want to get as much burn damage from them as possible, and cards like Alibi and Flurry will allow you to keep going face while preventing your opponent from doing stuff to you. And then finally, you're going to finish your opponent off with burn. Frozen Touch is an extremely important card. You want to try and weave it in as much as possible without sacrificing your opponent's ability to deal damage to you as well. So you have to kind of consider what possibilities your opponents can have, you know, to deal with your shit. And you want to try and balance that with dealing as much burn damage to them. In general, Frozen Touch is going to be extremely strong at doing that because for two mana for three damage, you can just keep hitting your opponent in over and over and over. 
And a lot of decks, like Rogue, for example, don't have a lot of healing. In fact, Rogue has, like, almost no healing, which is part of the reason why it makes it a stronger matchup. Mage has cards like Hold Case, which can gain a little bit of armor. Even Mindlock has a finite amount of healing. So this burn damage starts to really add up, and eventually you'll reach a point where you'll just have amassed so much burn in your hand that you can just kill them in one turn. Um, same with Mordrush as well, just a really nice finisher. So another thing to consider is just really try and count your damage. I'd say starting around turn 4 or turn 5 after you start getting your early chip damage in. See how many turns you can get your freezes out of, right? You want to use your freezes on a turn-to-turn -turn basis, and that'll help kind of formulate a game plan in your head and kind of a clock as well. So if you have cards like Frozen Touch, Wildfire, Pings, stuff like that, Reckless Apprentice, start counting how much mana it'll cost to throw all this at your opponent's face. Try and see how much damage you can get from your minions and try and see if you can count down like a two or three turn clock. That'll really help plan you out um, when to exactly use your alibis and your flurries. So yeah, that's um, pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. Feel free to like and follow, subscribe. I stream this a lot on Twitch, so if you guys want to watch some cool gameplay, you can go check out my Twitch. I'll probably be live. Or you could go check out one of my Ping Mage videos. There's a ton of gameplay there. Um, you know, if you come and see me on stream, feel free to ask me questions. I try to help you guys learn. And yeah, I hope this video helps you guys. Later.